Hey guys, Elite Legionario here, and I am bringing you a four player free for all for Rome Total War. As you can see, I'm in command of the Seleucid Empire. Uh, my immediate opponent in front of me, Recryptus, is in command of the Greek city states. The Julio Roman player is Meteor 50, and this other fella here over to my right is Gunther the Brave, who is in command of Pontus. So I'm going to go after him, seeing as those two look to be fighting each other. Uh, my army consists of four gold gold silver shield pikemen, four gold gold silver shield legionnaires, five gold attack archers, and four gold gold cataphracts. Gunther the Braves army consists of six gold gold bronze shield pikemen, five gold attack uh, archers, and six gold gold Cappadocian cavalry. Uh, Meteor 50's army consists of uh, let's see, five gold gold triarii, five gold gold urban cohort, three gold gold Praetorian cavalry, and a gold gold Roman armored general, and four. Uh, Roman archers, some uh, three are not, not grades and one is gold gold. Recryptus' army consists of six gold gold armoured hoplites. He has four gold gold Spartan hoplites, four gold attack archers, uh, and two gold tech Cretan archers and a general's bodyguard unit. So that's the outline here. So uh, I'm going to form along here and I'm just going to see and wait if uh, there's any opportunities to catch Gunther the Brave out of position. That's my thoughts. Um, I don't especially want to climb up here and fight him at a hill incline. So I'm looking for opportunities to find even ground, basically. Uh, in most of my experiences, experiences playing uh, the Seleucids versus Pontus, I don't understand why this happens, but um, Silver Shields stroke usually lose against uh, Bronze Shields. Um, I don't know why. They've got the same stats, but I've tested it many times. I've been both factions many times, and Pontus usually almost always comes out on top if they've got even upgrades. Uh, I've seen, you know, about 6 out of 10, or even 7 out of 10 times, Pontus' Bronze Shields will be beat Silver Shields from Seleucid, so I'm not quite sure what that is. Um... I don't know, I'm just... They have the same stats, it's weird though, but it's... I've tested it quite a lot, and it seems to be a consistent thing. So, I don't know if any of you have heard of that, had that, then I'd be interested to know. So, I'm going to advance forward here, um, but I still don't really want to be coming uphill so much, because uh, it would also make moving my uh, cataphracts around quite difficult too. So, um... I just want to try and get it on even ground here. In the meantime, let's have a look at what's going on over here. Um, Meteor is very sort of um, spread out, which is not good. Uh, it's like he wanted to go for Pontus, then changed his mind and went for um, Greece. It looks as if Greece is pretty content to stay on his hill. Um, it appears to be not four Spartans, five Spartans, so yeah, I missed that. There's actually two units fused together there. Um, and back over here, uh, he's moving, uh, Gunther's moving over to this side, which is good because this is more of an even terrain, so when I come down, I won't be height disadvantaged in the infantry duel. Um, it can make, it's not much of a height thing over here, but it could make all the difference to who wins. I mean, the best good way to beat Phalanxes too is to get them on uneven terrain. That's historically how the Romans like to do it, and that's just a very good way to combat Phalanxes. So, um, my plan is to use my obviously use my Cataphracts to combat his um, Cappadocians, but Cataphracts are better than Cappadocians because it's got the mace, and I'm going to use two units of my Silver Shield Legionnaires to provide support, while the rest of my uh, infantry are. Uh, 
battle against this guy against the Pontic main line and my archers obviously against their archers. Uh, I suspect my cataphract should be able to win and I'm going to use obviously use the two of these Silver Shield Legionnaires to stop them getting out manoeuvred by those extra um, Cappadocians so that they don't get surrounded. So um, that's basically the plan at the moment. And I can tell by the way Gunth is um, forming his army, he doesn't want to move any more than this. So I'm going to have to be the one on the offensive, which is fine by me. I like going on the offensive. Um, over here I see an opportunity to shoot some of his uh, Cappadocians. His flanks are exposed and they're just sitting here and they are in range of some of my archers. So um, I'm going to take those shots in a moment. As you can see, I've got men ready to fire. And here they are here, some few units getting hit here. And their backs are turned, so they'll take a few casualties. Uh, Pontus' Cappadocians, I think they look really cool, but they're not as heavily armed, armoured rather as cataphracts in my opinion. Cataphracts look a lot more um, heavily armed, or armoured. And... Um, Seleucids are probably my uh, second, uh, actually definitely my second favourite faction after the Julii. If you like, want a faction that's got a wide variety of options, Seleucids are definitely the best choice. They have great cavalry, they've got cataphracts, and they've also got companions, and companions are good as well, cavalry as well. They've got these Silver Shield Legionnaires, which are perfectly good as frontline infantry, or as flanking infantry and support infantry. They can do a multitude of roles, also great in sieges, uh, gives, them, gives the Seleucids quite a lot of options other over other phalanx factions. They've also obviously got their own phalanxes, which are, are pretty decent ones too. Um, and they've also got chariots and elephants. The only thing where the Seleucids aren't, aren't e excellently well provided are the, um, is the field of archers, but they've still got regular archers at their disposal, so um, all in all, most well-balanced faction in the game, or most, you know, in terms of units and stuff, is the Seleucids. Uh, I prefer the Romans, though. I don't like using urban cohort and Praetorian-only builds, though. I hate that. Um, I like to use more historically accurate Roman armies and use Roman-style warfare, you know, in formations and things if I can. So, um, that, that's me. But, I mean, everyone has their own um, particular likes and dislikes for battle. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people um, don't reckon Silver Shield Legionnaires are as good as the Silver Shield Pikes. I can actually tell you they're better. Um, not only have they got their peeler, they, they're about equal with uh, Roman Legionnaires, which are Roman Legionary Cohort, which are proven to be equal with um, Royal Pikemen. If you watch several of my videos, you can see them being uh, in, in, in an even duel with Royal Pikemen, whereas Royal Pikemen will always build, beat Silver Shield Pikemen. So... Um, the Legionnaires actually provide even better frontline infantry than the uh, Silver Shield Pikes. A lot of people don't know it though. They seem to think Silver Shield Pikemen are better, but I can assure you they're not. Um, but that, a lot of people like to use them in flanking uh, operations, which is also very good. So uh, I'm moving my cavalry around to the side here, and as you can see, um, I'm taking a lot of casualties to these archers. So when I go into this battle, I'm going to have about 15 less men in all my uh, pike units as opposed to these um, bronze shields. So he's going to have the infantry advantage, so my cavalry really have to perform in this duel, but fortunately uh, I have the cavalry, I have less cavalry, so he probably has the advantage in numbers, but I have better, better cavalry, and I've got infantry support, so it's pretty even. Um, for some reason I forget the peeler, which is really unfortunate. I, I thought I had it on. Oh no, I do have it on. I must have forgot. No, I do have it on, my bad. Um, for some reason I thought I forgot it because when I last, I just went, did a wee bit of a check over this battle before, um, yeah that's what happened wrong, they charged in before using them correctly, and they didn't inflict a lot of damage with their Peter, which is a bit unfortunate, so, um, that's not so great. So, um, as you can see my infantry is doing okay at the moment, it's pretty even for the silver shields and the bronze shields at the moment. But um, you'll start seeing the uh, bronze shields start to win over most of these um, silver shields. But as you can see, the uh, cab battle has gone in, and I've gone in mace right away, and I am 
Um, and I'm going to break down these Cappadocians very quickly. And now I'm free to provide support, and I've also freed up a lot of my um, uh, cataphracts here, and I'm just going to provide extra support. I'm going to smash straight through, though, and go in for these back lines. Uh, interestingly enough, these Silver Shields break. That's unusual. I don't know why that happened, because Silver Shields... I've, I've definitely seen them um, prove to be better than Bronze Shield, so I'm not quite sure what was going on there. So uh, over here he turns around to intercept me, but uh, I'm going to scoot by, pretty much unscathed, and I'm going to hit the backs of his general unit first, and that's going to cause a mass rout. Now he flees the field like a coward! So uh, I like to usually go for the general unit, if I can rout it, it'll usually rout the rest. Um, my archers took a bit of a beating from his archers, but uh, all in all, it was a pretty good turnout for me. Uh, Pontus and the Seleucids is always a good matchup. Usually, I'd give the edge to the Seleucids though, just because I've got a wee bit of variety. But they're both pretty similar. Uh, Pontus has got some really cool um, cavalry options as well, with the, you know heavy, Pontic heavy cab and their light cab and whatnot. So um, my opponent gunned the Braves at, amidst defeat. So good game to him. It was fun. And I'm just going to mop up the remainder of these men. Um, I've still got enough infantry here to um, hopefully present a front line to my next opponent. Let God be praised! The enemy general is killed! Fear makes a home in our enemy's hearts! So, uh, as you can see, cataphracts quite decisively and usually beat Cappadocians just because of the mace, basically. Um, not to say Cappadocians can't beat cataphracts, it's just uh, in a one-on-one -on -one situation with equal upgrades and positioning and stuff, usually the all the cataphracts will win. So, just, um, you know, you kind of need to surround them if you've got, if you, uh, you know, got the micro to do it. So over here, uh, let's have a look what's going on over here. So it looks like um, Meteor has outpositioned this unit of Spartans here with these uh, urban cohort. But uh, they're not doing so well all, now all of a sudden um, because these uh, armored hot fight have come in to assist. Um, they're pretty even infantry in my opinion, Urbans and Spartans, but Urbans have got more uses so that makes them better in my opinion. Um, there looks to be a very messed up sort of testudo there, so that might have been a bit glitchy. They weren't properly in it, but they were still using the testudo animation. So, um, Meteor, in my opinion, didn't really have the right kind of force to fight this Greek army. He would have been better off fighting me or Pontus, simply because he um, made use of lots of Triarii, and to beat Greeks, you need lots of infantry, because Greece is usually not going to have any dangerous cavalry. So it looks to be like where Cryptus is going to win here. Um, his Urbans were doing well, as Urbans always do, but uh, Spartans and Armands mixed together, he's not really got much of a chance. And over here, um, what's um, stopping these uh, Urbans from doing well is because they're not getting an opportunity to slip around the flanks. I've found the best way to break through Spartans or any hot plight unit, particularly with Urbans, is just sort of, you get them to walk in there and then you just march um, into their line. You'll take a few casualties, but it'll just, it'll terminate the, um, it'll, you know, disrupt the phalanx and so then they'll start fighting with swords. And once swords are out, Urbans will smoke any unit in this game in a sword fight, without a doubt. Um, there's no, no other unit with a sword that's nearly as good as Urban, so um, when the Spartans get messed up like this, um, as you can see these Urbans are now winning because these, um, well they were winning until these um, Hoplites came in, but they, they um, see that they're winning because their swords are out, so uh, that's how you usually beat down um, Hoplites and things, you just try and disrupt the formation and once the Urbans get their swords in and the enemy can't use their uh, spears and for Phalanx formation, that's usually the end of it. Um, good way to combat Kerbin, uh, Kerbins, <laughs> Urbans is to use a continuous um, line with no gaps in between. That way they can't uh, get in the gaps and wrap around the flanks and that always allows uh, most units to fight them better. Uh, but really Greece is the only faction that's got the infantry that can match Rome one for one. Other units can do it, uh, the Sacred Band of Carthage can do it, and um, Royal Pikemen can hold for a while but they will eventually break if they're up against Urbans. 
Armored Hot Pipes can do it for a while too, but they'll break as well. Same with Sacred Band, they'll hold, they will all break usually under Urbans, unless you've got a continuous line and you're fast with your cavalry. So, um, probably why Urbans get used so much, because they're so damn good. So anyway, it looks to be the Cryptus is winning here. Obviously he just used a, he had more infantry on the spot basically, and he maintained his height advantage the whole game. So uh, that's going to cost um, Meteor 50, and in this time I've been moving my men over at a steady pace. Um, walking like this just allows me to rest my men too at the same time. So um, I see that this cavalry unit comes up here and uh, Meteor must forget about it because it just sits there so I'm going to go pick them that off my cataphracts in a minute. So as you can see it's a, a fairly decisive uh, Greek victory there for Red Cryptus. And um, so I'm just moving along and like I said I'm going to go after this uh, remaining Praetorian unit. Um, Praetorians actually look the same as Urbans, they're just like the, like the men look the same as urbans, they've just got different shields. Um, if you know, it's a little bit of trivia if any of you haven't noticed, I'm sure you have. Now, a few of these regrouped urbans and triarii and um, archers are rushing this way as well as some cavalry, the general's, uh, general's guard unit actually. And I'm just going to charge my cataphracts in in mass, and this should uh, route these urbans. That one went friggin' matrix style flying over the back, and um. I'm going to knock them down, and there's all of them. So originally I thought this was scored resolution, so this, uh, this is why I went after all these kills. I actually, it turns out it was an LMS game. Uh, I prefer scored in FFAs, because that stops hill camping and things like that being a problem. Plus it makes the games quicker and more entertaining, um, and sort of more chaotic and exciting in my opinion. Uh, that's the... The enemy general um, flees! Press forward so that the spirit of his army is a broken tool. That's sort of what's so exciting about um, free-for-alls. There, you know, there's lots going on, and there's lots of cool battles and stuff, and um, a lot of people like them. I, I like all kind of games. I like uh, one vs ones, two vs twos, three vs threes, free-for-alls, sieges, all of it. It's all fun. Um, so anyway, I'm just preparing my men to march, and what I want to do is I want to come up over here, um, try and get the hill advantage because uh, his infantry is way better than mine, he's got a lot of them, so my cataphracts will play an important part here. Um, there's still three Spartan units left, so I'm going to triple speed it here guys, um, if you want to skip ahead until we're all in position, go ahead. Um, but as you can see, he's not going to give me the advantage, um, and I'm looking for opportunities to see if he uh, like leaves any of his arches behind, so I can pick him off my cataphracts. That's where uh, light cavalry units can come in handy. You know, if they have units hidden in behind or slowed down or exhausted, you can go get some light cab to go pick them off and things like that. It all helps. And uh, he's going to form a semi-new box style formation. Um, well, there's obviously his armoured hop right in front and his Spartans protecting the side and the back. And his arch is there. So anyway, um, I'm going to stop the triple speed now. And uh, I did come over here with my cataphracts, but I pulled back because I didn't see any opportunities. And I'm going to uh, grasp this opportunity to grab this just even ground here. And I'm going to use my uh, my Silver Shield Legionnaires to screen for my um, pikes here and um, provide some peeler uh, damage and just, you know, mix them together and let them work together because it's quite a, it can be quite useful that way as well. So here I'm um, putting my arch just obviously behind there and I'm just going to target the Cretans. I see them as the biggest threat, but it doesn't really matter now because I'm pretty, pretty sure everything's in range. But uh, the thing about this sort of semi new box formation is when you put arches in the new boxes, they're really clumped together and you can't put them in loose formation. So then it's really easy to hit them with arches because every hit's going to be a, like a, a fatal one. So um, I'm targeting the Cretans only, but lots of these um, other arches have already taken casualties as well. So um, that's really good. So even if I land in front or to the side and stuff, I will um, hit the other arches. So here I move my cataphracts behind, so basically I'm just going to engage from the front then smash into the back of him with my cataphracts. Um, and this unit of 
uh, archers were out completely and I wasn't even targeting them, I was after the Cretans, I believe and they were out so that's you know, an example of how bad a box formation can be on archers like this um, I wouldn't bother using a new box ever unless I you knew my opponent had no archers and I had no chance even then I wouldn't use it because I don't really think it's a very you know, sporting sort of tactic I guess um, it is a tactic but it's kind of annoying and it always it always gets a lot of you know negativity from people so here I'm going to charge these Spartans and see if I can knock a few of them out just by mass numbers um, one less Spartan unit's handy but this doesn't really work too well it says that they're getting defeated but they end up taking down like 10 cataphracts so it was kind of wasteful but I thought I might have been able to um, knock a few of them out but as you can see it's probably more than 10 cataphracts but I thought if I hit them all on the back then that I might do uh, considerable damage to um, that one Spartan unit and knock it out but never mind it didn't work so uh, anyway um, here this almost looks like the uh, silver shields have got bikes in their hand the legionnaires have got bikes in their hand because they're so intermixed like that it looks pretty cool but um, these hoplites and Spartans come in and I don't expect to win but here I come in for a full real charge and it routes uh, three full units of these uh, Greek guys and I'm going to withdraw um, quickly because I don't want to get caught on these Spartans and um, I think Recryptus' mistake was he engaged all his infantry right away instead of leaving a couple in reserve to shield from my cataphracts because he should have been able to win with those hoplites because they're better than many think I have. The gods be praised! The enemy's hearts are full of fear and now they flee! So uh, now his Spartans and all, and all his units just break and I'm going to run them down but the battle ended there anyway. So um, that's a victory for me. I had 1,425 men, I got 1,854 kills, I had 636 men left, and Rocryptus had 1,391 men, he got 1,091 kills and 211 men left. Meteor 50 had 1,327 men, he got 865 kills and he had 139 men left, and Gunther the Brave had 1,531 men, he had 855 kills and 113 left. So here's the uh, statistics card, as you can see all my cataphracts did uh, really well, as they always do. Cataphract, all of them getting well up over 100 kills and two of them getting over 200 kills. My Silver Shield Legionnaires did, um, my two bottom ones here did pretty good. My other ones, my top one did okay, the other one routed very quickly, I don't know why that was. My archers did pretty good too, they probably were losing against the Pontic players archers, but they ended up getting quite a few of those other archers from the fight with Greece. And my Silver Shield Pipemen, they did fairly good too, actually. A lot of them evened out too, so um, that was good. So anyway, good game to Rocryptus, Meteor 50, and Gunther the Brave. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.